This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by the Sword Shirt, which proclaims the truth that every sword enthusiast knows down to their core that swords are awesome. Why? Because swords! That's why. Available through Teespring. Link in the description. Shadowversity. Greetings, I am Shad, and as very evident by my backdrop here, I really like swords. I like to know about them, how they are used, how they are made, what historical context do they fit in in regards to the culture, and also how they were developed. And more recently, my own personal study has had a couple of breakthroughs. Now, I'm not discovering anything new. Uh, this information is obviously out there, that's how I was able to find it. But what I find interesting about this is that I have not heard many other sword enthusiasts actually talk about some of the things that I have recently learnt. You see, swords are awesome, and a sword that is better at being a sword is a better sword kind of obvious. But what does a sword need to do to be a good sword? Well, it needs to hold its edge when striking. Uh, also when on impact, uh, resisting bending is another important thing. Will it snap? What type of weight balance does it have? Is it functional in your hand? Over the long course of human history, we have been refining these elements to make swords better. And one of the interesting things about this process are the materials in which they have been made out of. They started being made out of stone, and then from stone, it eventually develops into metal, and we find copper, then bronze. And I have to reference this phenomenal video by Medieval Review that reviews basically the earliest uh, weapons that we really can call swords, or the closest thing to swords in this period, ever found. More information in his video. Bronze moving on to iron, iron into steel, and steel hasn't really changed. Uh, I, there's been really fun discussions on other channels. I know Skylagrim has had this discussion about are there any other more advanced uh, metals or materials that we can make swords out of to make swords better at being swords? And in my own personal study, it's been very hard to find anything that functions better at steel. Steel has this almost optimal ratio of strength to weight. So you can find lighter materials and people think, well, if it's lighter, it's easier to use. That's not necessarily a good thing because a sword actually needs an appropriate amount of weight to have enough force when you strike with it. And so far, the best material, and I'm saying this after having looked at things like aluminium and titanium and, and other things, and, and perhaps graphene or graphite, I forget, uh, that's more, we need to develop that a bit more. So far, steel is the best thing. So steel is phenomenal. At this point in time, it is the ultimate sword metal because the properties that you can engineer into to make it so flexible and shock resistant yet so hard and keep a good edge, it, steel is amazing. So when did steel start to be used in swords? This is a really interesting question because it's amazing stuff. Therefore, I am keenly interested into the process. Uh, when did it first happen? And what was the experimentation going on behind the scenes to the point where it was more uniformly understood, where all the swords were being made out of steel? Well, this has led me onto a very enjoyable journey, and I'm going to share that journey with you and the things that I've learned along the way. So some people say that steel was invented in about uh, 300 BC, which is not entirely correct. Uh, this is more so when steel started to become more widely known, not its actual invention. And when I say around 300 BC, we're looking at India and the development of uh, crucible steel. You might have heard of Damascus steel and other things like that. This is actually a fairly early development. It started off small, then it started to become a bit more widespread. But what's important to note, the uh, development of the this incredible quality steel so early on was for the most part forgotten. Steel wasn't, okay, people figured out how to make steel, but there are issues in terms of purity levels, carbon content, and the very fine-tuned process of quenching and tempering to get the best quality steel for a blade that you can get. Rome was eventually able to produce steel. And remember, I said eventually, it's only in kind of the later part of the Roman Empire. Most of the weapons and armor that uh, Rome used throughout the earlier part of the empire was made out of iron, not steel. But the type of steel they were able to develop was not Damascus steel, the really high quality stuff that you could get out of India. 
It should also be said that there's been a re-examination of some of the findings in Britain, uh, a dig called Broxmouth. New analysis of certain iron artifacts has dated them to be 300 BC, and they were made out of high carbon steel, which was deliberately heat treated and quenched. These artifacts are the earliest evidence for sophisticated blacksmithing in steel production within Britain. So it wasn't just in India where more sophisticated steel technology started to be developed. But what is interesting to note, it wasn't uniform in every single nation. And indeed, when you go past the uh, this early classical kind of period, past the fall of Rome into the early Middle Ages and High Middle Ages, steel quality was still fluctuating. Okay, so that gives us the date of around 300 BC, where we can say good quality steel was most definitely in production. The technology existed but were swords being made out of steel before this time? Well, I can give a definitive example to say yes to this question in an archaeological find that happened in Jericho. But there is also a precedent that swords could have existed made out of steel even before the, this time. I'm not saying they were, but it's just possible because we have found artifacts that were made out of steel. They weren't swords, but they artifacts made out of steel specifically. And there's not too much of a leap or a step to look at this material that we have found absolute evidence of, and people would have been able to tell this is a much stronger material, and it was uh, jewelry, right? But if jewelry, stronger, we, are, we swords existed, okay, weapons and stuff, could we make weapons out of this strong material? That, that's not a huge leap in my opinion. But of course, until we actually find weapons made out of steel this early on, we can't say it did exist. We can just say it's, it's possible. In 2005, metallurgical analysis by Hideo Akanuma of iron fragments found in Kalahoyuk in 1994, dating to 1800 BC. That's a big difference between 300 BC, so it's over a thousand years earlier. Revealed that some of these fragments were composed of carbon steel. These currently form the world's earliest known evidence for steel manufacture. Now it does need to be said that when the very first uh, production steel was of course by accident, but it could have happened in multiple places in multiple areas because there is a very easy way that you can accidentally make steel. And that is when you make something out of iron and then leave it in a coal furnace or something like that. This can actually carburize the surface layer of iron into steel where the rest of the object is just still iron. But there is an archaeological find of artifacts that were made out of uniform carburized iron, steel, all the way through. In the Um Ad Dinamanir region of the Bakwa Valley in Jordan. This dates to the earliest part in the Iron Age at around 1200 to 1050 BC. And I'm reading from an article entitled The Earliest Steel from Transjordan. In this site, they found 11 complete pieces of iron jewelry together with 40 additional fragments. Five of these items had microscopic islands of uncorroded metal, and therefore they could be studied. These items were discovered to have a uniform distribution of carbon, creating a range from mild steel to high carbon steel. So we can say with a high level of accuracy, I mean, sometimes other things can be discovered to disprove other things, which is why we won't say we know definitively, but we can say with a high level of accuracy, steel with a uniform distribution of carbon existed as early as 1200 BC. So could there have been swords made out of steel as early as this period? It's possible. But we haven't ha found any proof. But what we have found is a, a, an artifact, a sword, that dates to 600 BC that is made out of steel. And it is called the Vered Jericho Sword. A and it's amazing. I and what, uh, what the other side of this that amazes me is so few people know of it. And I wonder because it's in such poor condition. It's an old sword and so iron, steel, it rusts, right? And because it's in such poor quality, I wonder if that's why people haven't really uh, be, been told about it, heard about it, seen enough things like that. Because sword enthusiasts love to share pictures of historical swords that still look like swords, it still look pretty cool. So I have taken a very close look at this sword, studying it, you know, in detail, and made this. I've recreated the Vera Jericho sword in its most likely original appearance. 
Now we don't need to look at it as a rusty piece of junk. We can see what it most likely originally landed. It is a beautiful sword. Look at the size of this thing. Here's some of the breakdown of this sword's properties. One of the most awesome things about the Vera Jericho sword is its size. People like, uh, it seems to be the assumption that uh, the swords of the classical period were all basically short swords, okay? About yay big, you call them long daggers or just really small swords. But there was such a large amount of uh, longer swords and we would call them the equivalent to arming swords. They're that length. And there are many examples of bronze and the Vera Jericho sword is an archaeological example of one being made out of, it's funny, it is steel but it's actually a bit of a composite. It's a composite between iron and steel and I'll explain it in a second. The sword is three feet, okay? That's a big one-handed sword, guys. It's double-edged and has a prominent central ridge running down the middle which is very equivalent to some of the bronze swords that I've studied from museums and other things like that. Have a look at these bronze swords. See that these really pronounced central ridges? So this shows that these swords were also used for thrusting and having stiffness and rigidity in the thrust was very important. So they specifically engineered a big prominent ridge. This is sophisticated engineering here, and the Vera Jericho sword has this feature as well. The hilt had a full central tang, and the other components, most likely made out of wood, were riveted on either side, sandwiched just like in Mesa sword construction. X-rays of the blade has shown that it is actually a forge-welded composite of work-hardened iron and carburized steel. This is a very complex and sophisticated construction and it was in 600 BC. This is amazing. From everything that I've been able to find out, it is the earliest steel sword that we have ever found. If you know of an artifact, of a steel sword artifact that existed before then, please let me know. But so far, the Vera Jericho sword is it. The other side to this, which is also really significant, is that it gives a very clear example of an Israelite sword, okay? Vera Jericho, this is in the Israel territory of 600 BC. This is during the reign of King Josiah from the Bible. It has actually been quite a difficult question to find out what ancient Israel weapons looked like. It does seem that in the later periods, uh, they just uh, kind of copied or uh, was able to trade and get weapons from cultures near and around about them. And so the Gladius seems to be the most likely example for the swords that were probably in use in ancient Israel. We're talking about Jerusalem during say the times of Jesus Christ. But before then, it has been hard to tell. And in my research, I've actually come across many people asking questions. What did the swords of ancient Israel look like? And many people were was only able to answer them and say, we have no idea. Well, here is the answer. We also know from other archeological finds that swords were still being made out of bronze in this period as well, which as we assumed from the beginning of this video, the development and invention and adoption of steel in swords obviously was a gradual process where different periods, you know, geographic, geographical locations uh, had the technology, they developed it, they employed it, and other places didn't. But I personally feel that this is great information to know for every sword enthusiast. What was the first steel sword uh, that we have discovered? Well, it's the Vera Jericho sword. And what I'm also doing, I have uploaded images, okay, of my 3D model onto my DeviantArt page. There'll be links in the description. High detailed images that also mark out the dimensions and angles of this sword. I hope the image can be a reference point for uh, sword enthusiasts going into the future, if they ever want to point out to someone towards, well, this is the first, this is the oldest steel sword we have ever archaeologically discovered. If you find any other references to uh, steel artifacts and steel swords before this period, please let me know. But as for now, this is what I know as the oldest steel sword ever found. It has been incredibly difficult to find detailed pictures of the Vera Jericho sword, like just these ones I found. I had to get this one off uh, a uh, paper on the subject. I was able to get the PDF and then get a decent-ish quality uh, image of the sword. If you look up the Vera Jericho sword, there are no other high detailed images out there, but luckily I was able to find enough images after doing a, a lot of searching to make the 3D model. But now that the 3D model is out there, 
I hope it'll be far easier to find detailed depictions of this sword. Well, for one, there will be, because my uh, detailed depiction of the sword will be out there for anyone to download as a free resource. Just look at the size of this. I mean, this is a big sword, and it's been forge welded by composite parts of work hardened iron and steel. This is, an, this is an amazing sword. I would totally use it. Oh gosh. And I just find the hilt construction just really ergonomical and practical. And it has some similarities to, uh, you know, migration period style swords. This is fascinating stuff. The true grandfather and ancestor to every other sword that was made after it. Steel sword, I'm speaking because of course there was other material swords before then, but in terms of steel sword, this is the granddaddy of all the steel swords, which, like I said at the beginning of this video, has shown itself to be, so far, the very best material for a sword to be made out of. Thank you for watching, I really do hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, farewell.